This show is made possible through the support of FNX, First Nations Experience. You're on Native Ground. I'm Danny Herrera of the Miwok Nation. And I'm Belle Longy of the Cinnaboyne Sioux and Mandan Nation. Welcome to our second episode of this original series, created for FNX. Our Native youth reporters have been hard at work the last few weeks, covering Native American Day at the State Capitol, the National Congress of the American Indians Conference in Sacramento, California, and more recently, the American Indian Film Festival in San Francisco. Our featured role model for this episode is Mr. Saginaw Grant. Saginaw was born at the Pawnee Indian Hospital in Oklahoma in 1936. During his early life, he took on a variety of jobs from the dry cleaning business to working for the Bureau of Indian Affairs. His interactions with people gave him the opportunity to learn about other cultures. Saginaw continues to act in television, on stage, and in films. Saginaw was also the delegate to the United Nations Conference on Human Rights. Now let's go to Carly Kohler at the LA Skins Music Festival where On Native Ground interviewed Mr. Saginaw Grant. Hello, I'm Carly Kohler and you're on Native Ground. How did you become involved in acting? I'm a writer and I was holding a seminar. One of the clients in the seminar came and asked me if I could do, do a commercial. And I said, yeah. He said, okay, what have you done? I said, well, I was a reindeer in a Christmas play, my first grade. <laughs> and then I stopped, and he said, is that it? I said, yeah, that's it. And uh, I did two commercials, actually. Frank Rodham, an English uh, director, happened to be in uh, San Francisco, and he seen the commercial in his hotel room one night. He found me, and he said, Mr. Grant, he said, would you, would you like to come to Hollywood? I said, well, I, I, yeah, I guess I would. He said, I'll pay for your expenses, I'll pay for you coming down and taking a screen test. So that's how I got started in the movies, well, maybe 30 years ago. So, came a long way from the little reindeer, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> did the first people you meet in the movie business, did they become your lifelong mentors? Everyone helped me yeah. and made suggestions. I did meet a gentleman that really made an impression on me, and that was Dan George. And everything that he said, was told to me by my own grandpas and grandmas. And I knew that he was authentic. I knew that he believed in everything he was telling me. And so I really listened to him. Today it's a shame that we're losing some of our traditions. We're not keeping track of the things that we need to keep track of, especially our young people. We need to tell them stories. We need to tell them how to live their life. We all know right from wrong. We all know that. But sometimes you need a little bit of encouragement or a little bit of advice to make that difference. The things that I remember that caused me a lot of grief growing up was the things that I thought I knew, but I didn't know. I didn't know nothing about life. Very disheartening when I actually sat down and looked at myself. I was hurting my people, and I thought I was having fun. I thought I was doing what everyone else was doing, you know. But I found out that it's not the way. And I came back to our traditions and our, our way of life. So that's how I live my life today. I start my day off with a, with a prayer in the mornings. And that's the highlight of my day. That, that, that moment that I talked to the Creator, talked to Him several times a day. Do you have any favorite acting roles that you've done? Yeah, I guess about the first movie that I was in, it was called uh, War Party with Anthony Hopkins and him and Harrison Ford were my favorite actors yeah. and I liked the role that I had with him it was called the world's fastest Indian it was about a motorcycle it wasn't about me I enjoy what the, what I'm doing now and I'm, I'm working with Johnny Depp and the Lone Ranger do you enjoy working with Johnny Depp yeah he's, he's quite a person he's very sincere and he, he knows a lot of things about our way of life I don't know who taught him, probably his, some of his grandfolks. 
and I appreciate it because I can talk to him. You know, there was a lot of criticism about Johnny Johnny being Tonto. He got Cherokee blood in him, so he's an Indian. And everybody said, we've got a lot of Indian actors that can play Tonto, but a lot of our, our people aren't as big as he is and don't have that draw. People don't understand that, and they criticize him, but they don't even know him. He's the one that really put some of his money in making this film because Disney was going to back out. But he said, no, he said, this has to be made. And you'll find out when it does come out, it's not going to be like Tonto and Lone Ranger that you've seen before or heard about before. It's going to be completely different. It's nice to hear from someone who actually has gotten to know him. Is there any advice you would like to give to young aspiring artists? Yes, I would suggest that they listen to their elders, listen to the stories that they tell. A lot of the stories that they tell are the things that films are made about and understand what they have to do to get to that place there and accept it and do their best at whatever they do. We all have a niche that we are talented in, whether it be acting, a mechanic, or whatever it is, whatever you choose to do, do it with your whole body, with your whole heart, with your whole being, and you'll, you'll succeed. Thank you so much, and I'm very honored to have gotten to interview with you. I'm Carly Kohler, and you're on Native Ground. Billy Brown is the story of a young LA hip-hop artist who writes from her heart. She's forced to make those hard choices to chase her musical dreams, help her family, or stay true to her art form. Directed by Yusuf Delara and Michael Olmos, Philly Brown stars newcomer Gina Rodriguez in the title role, with Edward James Olmos, Blue Diamond Phillips, Jenna Rivera, Chingo Bling, and also Baby Bash. Philly is raised by her construction foreman father, Lou Diamond Phillips, while her junkie mother, Jenna Rivera, remains incarcerated on drug charges. Gina's character has to grow up fast which includes keeping her pretty 17-year-old sister out of trouble. Our On Native Ground reporters were at the Sundance Film Festival this year and made it to the red carpet premiere where Coley Kohler was able to interview Lou Diamond Phillips, Edward James Olmos, and Gina Rodriguez. Let's go to Coley Kohler at the Sundance Film Festival 2012. Hi, I'm Coley Kohler and you're on Native Ground. We're at the Sundance Film Festival, and we're about to interview people from the movie Philly Brown. We loved you on the well, bomb, but well, thank you very much. Can, can you tell our youth how it's like uh, being an actor in a film? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's like this film, like the movie La Bamba, you know, like Stand and Deliver. I mean, it's it's about it's about dreams. It's about you know having big aspirations for yourself and and, and a lot of hope. And um, that's one of the things I'm very proud about, you know, with Philly Brown and, and especially Gina Rodriguez's character, is that you know she's someone who believes in herself and has talent and goes after it you know, with the support of her family. For me, you know, being a young actor, I grew up in Texas, you know, and getting a big break in a movie like La Bamba, I think is, a, is an inspiration to young people out there who believe that they can achieve these things. You know, and, and just my success as a human being, as an actor, as an actor of color, you know, uh, it, it's nice when uh, I can pass the torch on and other people can follow after me. We're, we're a native channel. Can you tell us, um, we understand that you were adopted by a native family. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely, you know, I, I've got a you know a drop of Cherokee blood, but you know after a lot of the films that I did, I was uh, adopted by the Lakota Nation. I was given a, a Lakota name, which Chakvi Agluki, Starkeeper, and uh, I actually have a, a new series called Longmire, uh, where I'm playing Northern Cheyenne, and it's based on the uh, Longmire detective novels. My character is Henry Standing Bear, so uh, once again, I'm going native. <laughs> Thank you. We look forward to seeing you. Thank you. Hi. Hey, how, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I think we're doing good. How does it feel to be the father of the director? Are you proud of your son? It's, a, it's the proudest moment I've had in my understanding of the art form. Um, what can you tell youth who want to be involved in the media industry? How can they go about that? I think that anybody who really wants to be a part of this, okay, they should do it, especially women. I highly recommend it. All they only have to do is study. Study like you wanted to be an engineer or like you wanted to be a doctor or you want to be a lawyer. Use the same discipline that those people used to discipline themselves to be the best that they can be and use it in this art form and you'll make it. How does it feel to be in a film that is indigenous? Yeah, the indigenousness of our lives is very, very, very important to us. And uh, we are indigenous to this hemisphere. Okay, And uh, whether you be from North America or Central America or South America and you're back, you go back 
in generations upon generations back, you know, 40,000 years worth of humanity that's been here, you really do take it as a very strong understanding. Um, and this film really portrays the, the belief and the understanding of who we are as people. So the indigenous people should be very, very, very happy. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're going to like it. <laughs> Hello. How Hi. are you guys doing? Good. Fantastic. Um, how does it feel to be in a film that represents the Latino culture? It was an absolute pleasure to do that. Let me tell you, the reason why I became an actor is because I want to be a motivation and inspiration to little brown babies everywhere. Know that if I could do it, you could do it ten times better. We have a voice. We have stories to tell. And not like our specific stories. No, it's the same girl next to you story. It's the same boys next to you story. We have the same stories to tell, first, second, third generation, that feel just like everybody else. You know, we should be in Inception, we should be in Batman, we should be in all these movies, you know. We should work with Quentin Tarantino and Woody Allen, like, we have the ability to do it just like everybody else. But when you start seeing my face everywhere else, I'm going to represent those girls just, just like I've been dreaming of. Storytelling has always been an important part of our Native culture. We will carry on that tradition throughout our series. Today's story is about how being yourself is the most important part of your individuality. Trying to be someone else can often lead to an unwanted outcome. One day the bear invited the raven and his new wife, Crow, for dinner. Mrs. Bear cooked a lot of fish. When the fish was done cooking, Mrs. Bear put it on a platter and served it to Mr. Bear, the raven, and his wife, Crow. Before they started eating, Mr. Bear told his wife to put a bowl by the fire. Mr. Bear walked over near the fire and held his claws over the bowl. As his claws got hot, they began to drip oil into the bowl and fill it up. When the bowl was full of oil, Mr. Bear served it to Mr. and Mrs. Raven to dip their fish in when eating. When dinner was over, Mr. and Mrs. Raven thanked the bears for their meal and went home. One day, Mr. Raven said to his wife, It's time now we return our thanks to Mr. Bear and his wife. So Mr. Raven went fishing and brought his catch home and cooked it by the fire on sticks. When the fish was done, he invited Mr. and Mrs. Bear for dinner. They sat down and began to eat, but couldn't because there was no oil to dip their fish in. His claws began to wither and to dry and to burn. Finally, he fell backward and fainted, for his claws were all burned. And the story goes today that that is why the raven's claws are black and thin. The story goes that raven always imitated other people. This story is about living up to your own expectations and not trying to imitate others. Bear was able to get oil out of his paws because he stores a lot of fat in his body. But raven was not able because his body does not have a lot of fat. When he tried to be like Mr. Bear, he got burned. When you choose how to accomplish the important things in your life, Follow the feelings and strengths that you have inside you. Don't do something just because somebody else does it. There are some commendable values in this story. Hospitality and thankfulness are two that we can relate to right away. This is the Indian way. Be good to your company and be sure to be thankful. For a while, I really didn't like it. I didn't want to be Indian. I felt like I was being punished for something I didn't do. All I could think of was, I just want to be away from it. Today's film and review is Smoke and Fish. Corey Mann is a Tlingit businessman hustling to make a dollar in Juneau, Alaska. The film interweaves the unusual story of Mann's life and the process of preparing his traditional Tlingit food. This documentary chronicles Mann's struggle to pay his bills and keep his business. It also examines his life, raised by seven Tlingit women and living under the care of his extended family. Corey's childhood was centered on life with his great-grandmother, who was born and raised in a time when Tlingit culture was still dominant. Nobody can step on you once you learn what your house is, who you are, and where you came from how you got where you're at. My aunt, Cookie, came and picked me up in San Diego and brought me back to Alaska. As a child, Corey was terrified of Alaska, but as he became immersed in life there, he saw the beauty of how everything was alive and thriving. I'm not always Indian, I'm half white too, so 
I gotta have half white days. <laughs> Smoking fish is more than preparing traditional smoked salmon, explains Luke Griswold Turgis, the film's producer, co-director, and writer. We see traditional food as a connection with history and with the land, as well as a pillar that supports living indigenous culture. I'm Maddie Eaches of the Assiniboine and Chippewa Cree tribes, and you're on Native Ground. Finally got my feather. <laughs> the National Congress of the American Indians held their 69th annual convention and marketplace in Sacramento, California this past October. Over the course of six days, Representatives from tribes across the United States came to focus on the rights and sovereignty issues of American Indian and Alaska Native tribes. The purpose and original mission of NCAI is to serve as the unified voice of Indian country and to protect the rights and sovereignty of tribal nations. Our youth reporters were able to catch a wide variety of characters at the NCAI marketplace. We were also able to catch up with the FNX studio crew. Let's go to the marketplace floor with our on Native Ground reporters and meet tribal representatives from all over Indian country. Can you tell us why you're here today? Sure. So I'm Josie Raffalito. I'm the program associate at the Center for Native American Youth. We are a new policy program at the Aspen Institute in Washington, D.C. And we are working to raise national awareness to the issues that are impacting young people across Indian country. So we have a couple of different things that we're working on. Uh, first and foremost, we're definitely committed to spending time in tribal communities and hearing directly from young people, from tribal leaders and programs about what's working, what's not working in their area. Um, what are some of the major challenges and successes that they see? And it's those conversations that really uh, drive the work that we're doing in D.C. and we share those conversations with decision makers, policy makers, um, and people that are interested in these issues. I don't know what's in second or third place in most people's lives, but I know what's in first, our children. Native American youth are the most at-risk population in this country. And that's why I created the Center for Native American Youth. We are working with tribes and families to improve the lives of Native American children, and most of all, promote hope. We focus on preventing teen suicide and shining a light on the challenges Native youth face. Please help us build better opportunities for Native American children. Visit our website. Our website is www.cnay.org or centerfornativeamericanyouth.org. I'm Yamani Hedrick, and you're on Native Ground. Today I'm here with... Keys IMC. So, would you have any advice to Native youth that are looking to be musicians or just reaching their goals in general? We're, we're in a time where our people, you know, have a spiritual gift that was uh, given to our people uh, from Dedawa Ofunga, the Creator. And uh, we have an ability to, uh, to be true spiritual leaders, not only for our people, but for uh, non-Natives. And um, I think right now is a great time for our, our young people to become inspired and to find, you know, what it is to live to live a beautiful, uh, healthy life. You know, we know that in this world we have struggles, we have battles, you know, that we, we come out of, uh, we come out of historical trauma, you know, that our, our indigenous people went through. Uh, but I feel that, you know, from my generation to your generation, that um, it can change, you know, and, and the only way that it can change is by using our voices. But before that, using our spirit that come from the creator, the star people, and making that connection to all the creations around us and finding that gift, you know, with inside of every young people, that fire. And, uh, and once you find it, holding on to it because it's a beautiful thing. And uh, when you find that, it's undeniable and uh, nothing can come in between you and your, your destiny here on this earth. And uh, I think that when our young people find that, you know, and they feel that, that that's the true love. That's the true love that we have within our Chiksu from Tirawa, the creator. And uh, you have that light when you have that. And when you have that light, the path opens up. Could you tell us some of the struggles that you had to becoming a musician? Uh, being native. Just being native, you're overlooked. Being native, you're never really given an opportunity. Uh, so as natives, we are always told that we have to be better. We have to work harder. A lot of people don't really know about us. That's why we're still mascots. You know, that's why we're still made fun of. And it's okay. You know, so uh, the struggle that I've had is is um, is that. But on the flip side of that, we create our own opportunity. And if you create your own opportunity, you appreciate it more. We 
as Native people have to embrace that patience again so that we can we can truly appreciate what, what is here on this earth because we're only here for a short time. So my struggles is the fact that the chances have never been there, but I've been strong enough within my spirit and my mind to, uh, to make it happen for myself and for those around me. And uh, paving a way for those yet to come, you know, for my little nieces and nephews, my son, and, um, and just remembering my ancestors who've gone on before us. Today I'm here with Mariah Watchman, the first Native American female to be on America's Next Top Model. So what tribe are you from? I'm enrolled in the Confederated Tribes of the Umatilla Indian Reservation out of Pendleton, Oregon, but I'm also a Mandan from the MHA Nation in North Dakota. Today I came out to the National Congress of American Indians to go ahead and represent Nike and Seven and help lead the fitness walk so that I could promote healthy lifestyle throughout Indian country. So you're on America's Next Top Model, how was that? Yes, ma'am. I, recently, I was the first Native American female to appear on America's Next Top Model, and that was such a huge honor within itself because I've been an international model now since the age of 15, striving to prove myself as a Native in the high fashion industry. I've been signed with Elite Model Management. I've also been signed with Wilhelmina Model Management. Cool. So, like, I'm 15 years old. What would you give me advice to start? When I was 15 turning 16, I was in Bangkok, Thailand, all by myself for two months on a contract to build my book and to be in magazines and to gain experience. I also lived in Hong Kong for three months after I graduated high school. I would just basically let you know, like, never, never stop. You know, this is, the modeling industry is something that's very hard, it's very judgmental, and it's very critical. It's not an easy industry to be in. You definitely have to have tough skin, complete confidence in yourself all the time. And us being Native American women, we offer something that we have the edge because there's so many models in the United States, there's so many models in the world, but how many Native American models are there that are in the high fashion industry when you think about it? So what is your future? I hope to own my own Native agency to where I'm primarily going to just represent Native models, Native actors, and Native musicians. Right now I'm just currently being a creative director on photo shoots for Natives. I'm primarily taking all my experiences that I've ever had in the high fashion industry and using them towards you know, my target areas, my community and my people, you know, because it's just like I definitely i have gained so much knowledge that I can only hope to share. I'm doing Native photo shoots right now. I can I choreograph Native fashion shows, which features all First Nations people. Well, you definitely are inspiring me. Thank you. <laughs> um, I definitely want to thank On Native Ground for having me here today. I couldn't have done it without you guys, and I appreciate mm -hmm. all the support. I'm Mikhail Longi, and you're On Native Ground. We're at the Native Vote Phone Bank. Today I'm with Tiffany Smalley. Can you tell us why you're here today? Sure. So um, we are having a phone bank operation here at NCAI's 69th annual convention. We're encouraging Native voters in their respective communities to vote on Election Day, which is November 6th. Can you speak a little bit about the Native Vote campaign? This year, Native Vote is working to turn out the largest Native Vote ever. Um, we know that Native voters have been disenfranchised historically, and we want to encourage them to get out to the polls and encourage them and show them that their vote really matters. Youth is a big piece of our campaign this year. Um, we have a partnership with Rock the Vote, and we really want to encourage youth to um, participate in, in their elections as they become 18 and are able to vote. I'm Dana Herrera. Today I'm here with Nita Batiste. What role do you have here at NCAI? Well, I'm a representative of the Alabama Cushata Tribe of Texas. We are Texas' oldest tribe, federally recognized. There's three tribes in Texas, and I serve the Alabama Cushata Tribe as councilwoman. So what has been the highlight of this conference for you? I would say last night's cultural event to experience the California tribe and their cultural activities last night was definitely the highlight. I feel like I received a blessing just from the littlest one that was dancing. I believe he was two to the elders. It gave us a sense of just relation, family, and that's what it's all about. Not only through NCAI, but through the Indian community. We're all family, we're all related, and I felt a big part of it last night. Okay, well thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on the First Nations Experience. You have been watching On Native Ground. I'm Bella Longi of the Cinnaboyne Sioux and Manda Nation. And I'm Daniel Herrera of the Miwok Nation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mariah Watchman, and I'm here on Native Ground. Hi, I'm Josie Raffalito, and the Program Associate at the Center for Native American Youth, and I'm on Native Ground. 
My name is Tiffany Smalley. I'm an External Affairs Fellow for the National Congress of American Indians, a member of the Aquino Wampanoag Tribe, and I'm on Native Ground. Hey, I'm Lou Diamond Phillips. And I'm David Bianchi. We're on Native Ground. We're both on Native Ground. Hey, what's up? This is Gina Rodriguez with Philly Brown, and I am on Native Ground. Hi, I'm Nita Batiz, and yes, I'm on Native Ground. Yo, what's up? This is Keys IMC, representing Culture Shot Camp, representing the Skeety, Wolf Band of the Pawnee, and the Nogazi Clan, the Bear Clan of the Seminole, live on Native Ground. Dude all hey, hit him all hey. I'm Saginaw Grant, and I'm on Native Ground.